take a look at this. Hi there! It's day four! And uh, I glued this last night. Just taking the clamp off. So let's have a little look. I have to figure out. So the next step's going to be reinforcing in behind here. And I think to do that, I'm going to have to make a, uh, a counter mold that this all sits in. So, uh, so it's going to be my next step making the counter mold. Uh, so I'll probably make one for this area here. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm going to look at the top plate, see what else is, uh, needs doing on there. I probably just need to reinforce it a bit. I might go and grab it. Okay, so I've got to do... I'm going to do some reinforcing around here. So I'm going to just draw in approximately where I need to reinforce. The last one's going to be here. The other thing I have to do is I, I, uh, I'm going to improve these cracks here and this one here especially uh, just around here. I'm going to... I'll just mark this in. Um, I'll be inserting just a very thin slither of timber from here to there uh, because that's been that that crack just wasn't correctly glued at all. This crack hasn't been repaired very well, and then neither has this one. So I, I part of my repair is actually getting this crack looking good, getting this looking better, and getting this looking better at the same time. First of all, I'm gonna glue the other side of this. So I won't let you in on this because you saw me glue this side yesterday. So it's gonna be the same kind of thing. Uh, but I will show you, uh, I'll probably, I'll have to wait till tomorrow and then I'll show you how I do the counter mold and things like that. Okay, so it's another day on this restoration and uh, I've been finding it a bit hard to film myself the whole time. Uh, you know, I'm letting you guys into my world and, and sometimes it just gets a little bit much, you know, I, I kind of just want to focus on the work. But I really think it's inter like it, it's an interesting repair and I really think you should see what I'm doing. So right now I am, so I've been, I've been working on the, on the ribs and, and uh, that bottom block. So the, the way I've decided to do that restoration is to, to make a longer bottom block, I'll show you. So the original bottom block was, uh, was this big. No, no, it was four and a half centimeters. So I've just made it five and a half centimeters. So it's just that little bit wider and that will support those cross breaks in the ribs. Uh, that will cause so that'll that'll really strengthen that area down here uh, I'm gonna try and make that bottom block a little bit lighter so it doesn't add too much weight to the instrument Because you don't want uh, you know, you don't want the instrument to be too heavy So I've done this uh, I've fitted this bottom block uh, so One of the things that happens is that the end grain which is the grain up the top here so it's like literally as if I was cutting a tree just straight across and then and the so the end grain is the grain that you look down on uh, from the top and that really soaks up a lot of glue and if if i was just to put glue on there it would just soak up the glue and there'd be none left to actually stick the two pieces together so i've actually been soaking the ends of this uh, this new timber that i put on there so anyway um but I have, uh, I've glued this. I'll show you when I take the clamps off what I've done. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll show you the continuation of the repair. I'm also at the moment working on this crack right here. And uh, I'll show that to you. Uh, I'll just put this away. So that's just drying in the background back here. And uh, so right now what I'm doing is I'm actually cutting uh, into the top plate. So there's this one spot here where... Um, the crack had been repaired or, or, or a big chip had come out of the crack. So now what I'm doing is I am basically cleaning that whole area and fitting a new piece. It's kind of the only way that you can do it so it's nearly invisible. So I'm literally cutting into the top plate here. So this is very precarious. Alrighty, so I am getting closer to fitting a piece in here, but it needs a bit of extra fitting. So I'm going to leave that for the morning. 
Good morning. If my eye is particularly scary and big, it's because I'm wearing these magnifying glasses. So I am just in the final stages of fitting this little slither of timber. I really want to soak this in glue so that it really works well. So I'm just going to clean the um, glue off and then uh, let that dry. It doesn't actually need to dry all that long. Because it's just jammed in there, it doesn't need clamping. And also with the Australian climate, the glue is just drying so fast. But anyway, here it is. Okay, now that's done, I uh, have to take a sip of my coffee. Mm. I'm just gonna pop that around the back to dry and I'll grab the other part of the instrument that's been drying. So this is what I glued last night. So I'll just be taking the clamps off. So. I I glued the new bottom block on and basically because of uh, so I've made this block way wider than the original one this this was the original one so it's just enough to actually protect that area um, the, the cracked areas on both sides and it's a very easy way of like this isn't a super expensive instrument I put a bit of glad wrap under here so that the bottom block wouldn't stick to the back so that's gonna be my next step but first I have to there's uh, some of this lining that's come off so I'm gonna glue that back on uh, and then and also there's little bits of repair that I have to do on the rib here like that's just bits that have broken out so I'm gonna repair them at the same time so it's, uh, it's actually really chewed up down here I have no idea what they could possibly have done to like to, to make an instrument look like that it's it's absolutely shocking these marks are you know it's quite horrible so I'll um, I'll put on the lining and I'll get back when I when the times come to uh, to glue the whole back on or glue the instrument closed. The next day. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm just going to uh, clean up. Uh, so I've soaked soaked these areas. There were some old cleats there that I um, just a bit of old timber that was glued onto there. They have to get that off so I can put some new ones in. Um, and then I wash off the old glue with hot water. I've been soaking it with cold water for the last hour and a half. And then I'll, I'll put some new reinforcements here. This crack here uh, wasn't well done, like well glued. So I'm gonna, I'm working on opening it up actually. Uh, let me see how well that goes. If I don't open all of it up, I'll open part of it and then do the rest uh, later. Sometimes better to glue a crack in two parts anyway. The dirty part here, some of it is actually just Bad retouching. Give the violin maker some extra work. Yeah, that's that's varnish, that dark stuff, it's not actually dirt. And I've just got a think the oil can just sit here for now. Uh okay, so I glued those pieces on and now it's time to kind of cut them back. You can see like all these gouge marks here. I, it's just amazing. I have no idea how they managed to that, get that kind of damage on there. Anyway, for now, I am going to just going to plane this uh, these to the right height. At the same time, I have to plane back the top block. It's a little bit too high. And to do that, I actually have to wet it um, because it's something called end grain. So if you cut through across a tree, uh, what you're left with on the top is end grain and that's very hard to plane. So we wet that to make life a bit easier. Just cutting these pieces back a tiny bit. I'm very close to being able to glue the top plate back onto here. I have to soak this with um, with some glue because it soaks into that end grain very easily. And there's a tiny bit of gluing I still have to do down here. So I'm gonna do that and then tomorrow I will glue the top plate on, which is super exciting. So yeah, and also on the top plate, I still have to do some reinforcing and I have to glue this one crack that's still open. That's this crack here. All right, so I'm just gonna put a bit of glue on the end grain here. Just soaks in straight away, watch this. I literally, I put the glue on. And then it 
pretty much soaks in. All right, so the next step is gonna be gluing this crack. I've actually cleaned this a bit. So that's the crack here. It's gonna be very hard to make that crack disappear. It's not a super expensive instrument, so you know, I can't spend hours and hours on uh, doing like really fine detailed stuff, but I'll get it looking a lot better. So these two cracks, these cracks just have to dry and then I have to reinforce them. I think I'm very close to being able to close this violin, so that'll be good. Okay, so um, I just got to do a bit of filling around here, here and there. And then all the places, like all the spots, I've, I've cleaned all the old glue off. So I've just got to do a bit of filling down around the edges as well. So I'm just going to make a little mix uh, using like a podium and uh, glue. Uh, so it's a kind of wood filler for just some little spots. It's one way of doing repairs. It's, uh, you know, you can, a lot of restorations are actually done by replacing the wood. But sometimes when there's just very small areas that need replacing, uh, it, this wood filler is actually a really good idea. This instrument just has all these little marks where someone, it literally looks like they may have dragged the instrument over the uh, barbed wire fence or something. <laughs> so it's got all these little, uh, just little marks up, up through here. Uh, and then I have to do some varnish filling as well, so, and that's going to be around here. I'm, I'm actually waiting for the varnish uh, that I use to soften up a little bit. I kind of let it get a bit too hard. Oh, and I also found a little bit of an open spot, so I just quickly glued that. So that's drying at the moment. It's it's quite a warm day here, so that'll dry fairly fast. Just cleaning the glue off. All right, so a bit later, I'm also gonna do the varnish filling. All right, this needs to dry for a little while now. Few moments later. Varnish onto this instrument now. It's getting late in the day. The instrument's getting picked up uh, soon. Not, not today, but uh, in a couple of days. So I've got to really get moving. Just been so busy with a lot of other work. Let's have a look. Oh, firstly, uh, the end pin uh, doesn't fit, so I'm just going to fit the end pin uh, because it's got a new uh, bottom block. There we go, that fits. Uh, I'm going to take it out for now, put it back in the case because there's a lot more work to do. Next, I'm just going to clean off the glue um, from gluing and there's also from the filling, that's all dried now. Okay, so I'll just put on uh, just a little, I might just wear my really up close glasses. I have done all the filling on the varnish. And now I've got to wait for that. I can take this off so I can actually see something. So I've got to wait for that to dry. And uh, then I'll scrape that back. And then it'll just be time to retouch everything and uh, try and get the strings back on the instrument as soon as possible and get the instrument back to the player. Okay, so I've, uh, this is dried, so I've just got to work back these areas of varnish. Uh, so I'm going to use a scraper and, uh, and probably a little bit of sandpaper. But scraper first. Okay, I'm just using a bit of colour at the moment to recolour a couple of areas. So I'm going to put some clear varnish over these areas now. I'm going to do a bit of retouching uh, so I can let it dry overnight. I'm actually super tired. I've been working on this for some time. It's starting to look a lot better. There's still, you can see some lighter patches still, which I'm going to darken slowly tomorrow. Under here, starting to look a lot better. There's just a couple of lighter patches, just one here and one there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting pretty happy. The unfortunate thing with this instrument is I didn't get... I won't get the opportunity to optimize the sound with a bridge sound post and all that because she just wanted to stay with the same bridge. Uh, but she's going to be super happy having her instrument back and working again. The next day. Good morning. It's the next morning. 
This has all dried quite well. I've done a fair bit of the retouching. I just have to do a tiny bit more and then um, I'm going to do some more cover varnish. Then it's time to just polish everything up. There's a few little spots down the bottom here. gonna pop on a bit more cover varnish and then all that can dry again and it's gonna get into into the polishing like the final finish after that very exciting times I've just put on all a lot of the cover varnish you can see it's starting to look an awful lot better I'm gonna let that dry and get back to it a little bit later probably in about an hour or so Bye. Alrighty, so I've waited a little while. Um, this is now dried and I've put another, uh, so I've sanded, put another coat of varnish on. So I'm going to re-sand it. I'm going to use really fine sandpaper that is uh, 800 grade sandpaper. That's if I can find it. Here it is. Okay. And I'll sand it with a bit of water and then I might do another little lot of cover varnish. Okay, I've just got to wipe all the dust off and then uh, and as soon as uh, I'll just let these areas dry and as soon as they're dry I'll probably do like a final coat of varnish and uh, once that's dry I can just polish everything. It's looking really good though. Very happy with the way it's coming together. Okay, so that's dried now. I've spent a little bit of time. So this is all dry. I'm going to do one more coat of varnish just over the top. Now, if this was a different violin, like say it was like the, um, the Klotz violin or some other antique, much older violin, uh, I would probably put less varnish on. I don't like adding a lot of varnish to restorations, uh, but this is a, uh, a, a much newer instrument. The varnish itself is quite thick on it anyway. You know, in repairing this, I'm really trying to get the look back of what was there before. So I actually have the room room to do that. But like say, if it was a, a, a famous Italian instrument or something like that, I would not be leathering the varnish on um, you know, thickly, I, I'd literally just put varnish on the very area that I'm restoring and then meld it in with, uh, with the varnish around. It's important to, to work to the kind of standard of the instrument, the kind of varnish of the instrument. So this is, this is quite a hard, um, hard wearing varnish that's on this whole instrument. It's a, uh, it looks to me like a colophony and, and oil varnish. So it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of rosin in it, so it's, it, it leaves quite a thick layer on the instrument. And so by revarnishing, I have to recreate that thick layer of varnish. And actually, having the slightly thicker varnish actually makes my job a bit easier of kind of blending everything together at the end. You can really see it's it's starting to blend really nicely. Now I've just got to blend in, like I've just got to polish. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to sand it again and repeat the process. I won't show you that, uh, but I will show you when I'm almost finished. Well, the exciting moment has come where I am going to put the strings on this violin. So I've done most of the polishing. I am super happy with it. Uh, it's all finished down here. I might just give it one final polish. And then uh, I'll put the strings on. Now I'm not super happy with the bridge, unfortunately, that it came with, but I just like this was quite an expensive repair, so she didn't want a new bridge, which is a bit of a shame because she's had all this other work done to the instrument. But it's gonna, um, yeah, it'll be really nice for her to finally have it finished. I'll go and get the string. All right, so I've fitted the end pin back in.
Okay, so I've uh, the violin is finished. I've done the repair around here and the base uh, at the at the bottom block. I've fully replaced the bottom block on this instrument. I had to do that big crack repair underneath here, underneath the uh, underneath the tailpiece. Uh, I repaired a couple of these cracks just here, and uh, I'm just going to give the instrument a bit of a try. So literally the customers coming, uh, the client themselves can't come in, so they've sent someone else. The instrument's getting picked up uh, in a few minutes. Hopefully it'll be another happy customer. I always email to see if they're happy with the repair work, of course. You know, that's always really important to me. So I'll always email the client to make sure they're happy with the repair and get a bit of feedback, make sure the instrument's working really well for them. And, uh, but I'm very happy with the repair. It's looking fantastic. And uh, it's look pretty much looks like it never happened, which is always nice. And uh, hopefully the violinist will get a lot of joy out of her violin. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you like my videos, hit the like button, subscribe, and there's a little bell to make sure you get notified every time I post a new video. So uh, yeah, keep making beautiful music. See you next time. Bye.